the rim. The counter punch. All right, back like we never left because we never did leave. You got your boy, love one and hate one, and your boy Tony is in the building. And you already know we finna cook, man. We got an interesting topic and an interesting fight that's coming up this week. I feel like it's a sleeper fight because this guy, what the fuck is his name again? Buck Rum, uh, something, bro. I, I don't even know. Yeah, you guys know. Oh, that's all that matters because. I can't pronounce his name neither. So, Tim Zhu, the, the guy he's facing this week, he's a power puncher. I might put it up on the screen or somewhere, but matter of fact, you guys can see it because I'm going to put the uh, fight in the background. Maybe Fight Night Champion. I'm going to try to find Undisputed. But this guy right here, the guy that he's facing on the screen, y'all, he's a beast. I mean, shit, no losses. He got a high KO ratio, and Tim Zhu is coming off a loss. As you guys can see, he don't want no soft touch. But I'm one of those guys. I feel like Tim Zhu would have won his last fight if it wasn't for the eye injury. And if you think about it, he almost still won the goddamn fight, even with the eye injury. But it is what it is. Um, Tim Zhu was also asked a question. They asked him um, about the, um, like, basically... He could have quit if he really wanted to and won the fight and kept his belts. But he said, you know, I'm a warrior. And he's just going to take that mentality into his next fight. And to everybody else, that fight made him stronger. Is what he's basically trying to say. And, and then he's cut from that cloth. We, we all know his pops. It's a monster as well. Man, listen, I know Tim Zhu got a lot to prove. I do feel like this is going to be a, a decent fight being that He's coming back from an injury, layoff, etc. And I don't know if you've seen the interview, Tony, but this man was talking that shit. Talking about Tim Zhu and people think, like, you know, I'm just going to be a walk in the park. But he's talking the shit now. And the confidence is there, but I just don't see nobody that is not a champion right now or that is a top maybe one or two fighter at 154 giving him problems right now but this is why we love boxing and i do feel like it's gonna be a good fight because they both got a friendly style man they both go for the kill they both power punchers and it's gonna be interesting i think it's gonna be a good fight but i just can't go against that boy tim zoo man but um i will say that you know what i'm gonna say this after you say what you have to say what's your thoughts on it tony What's going on with y'all, man? Um, before before we get into this, um, this, this Tim Zoo and Bakram fight, I'm kind of a a little bit of a a little bit of a boxing historian, I guess you could say, with especially with recent fights, fights within the last eight to ten years. First thing I want to say, man, two years ago today, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Water knocked out Robert Hellenius. It was the last win that he had. And it was a devastating knockout. And the only reason that I'm bringing that up is because Deontay, Bra Deontay Wilder's birthday is in seven days. So just want to, you know, give, give my guy his flowers. So I want to start off with saying that. Now I'm back to business. Okay, Wilder. Okay, happy birthday, Wilder. So, yeah, back to business. Uh, so with, with the Tim Zoo fight, yeah, Bakram's a real tough guy. And at first I was a little guilty of, um, a little guilty of, kind of writing them off, kind of like a lot of people are, until I started doing my research. Um, and, yeah, he hasn't beat a ton of guys that we know, but if you watch his fights, his style, he's a talented guy. It's kind of like, uh, just to give you guys an example, like the Klitschko's in their era. A lot of people say the Klitschko's era was weak, which I agree with to an extent, but you cannot discredit what those guys brought to the table physically, mentally, and how dominant they were you know what i mean so they dominated when they were supposed to dominate and that's kind of how i feel about bakram he hasn't fought the top tier guys but he did exactly what he's supposed to do with your food you don't play with your food you get your food out of there i haven't really seen him in trouble in none of his fights <clears throat> and he's really tough you know coming like a, a israel madrajov was really tough for crawford now do i think we'll see that type of fight eh? It's possible, 
But the thing that I like about Tim Zoo is I was a Tim Zoo hater. Every time he stepped up in competition, I was hoping that he lost. I was feeling like he was getting too much props. I was feeling like he wasn't a good fighter. But every time I doubted that man, he proved me wrong. And one thing I'm a firm believer of is if I'm talking some bullshit, shut me up. And that's exactly what Tim Zoo has done. Done. He's done it on the big stages. He's done it in front of, what, 80,000 in his home country. And then he came to America. Had a win, then he had to um, he had the setback against uh, Fundora. True enough, but he proved that he's a game fighter. And when the chips are down, his back's against the wall. He's not going to shell up. So when you take in his physical abilities, combined with his mental tenacity, he's going to be a tough guy to beat. And I agree with Love One wholeheartedly when he said he doesn't see a non-champion beating him. So. Bakram, I feel like he's going to be a live dog. He's going to go in there and give it his best. He might give Tim Zhu, you know, some things to think about, work through, whatever. But if Tim Zhu is not having any lingering effects from the the the, the cut or confidence issues from the Fundora loss, and he's the same Tim Zhu returning to form, I expect this man to get the job done. Maybe inside the distance, but maybe not. But I do expect him to get the job done one way or another by any means necessary okay that was well said i like how you threw wilder in there too pretty unpredictable let me tell you guys this man it seems like we both you know got that boy tim zoo so this is what i like to do when it's like it's clear we both got basically everybody got tim zoo winning this fight let's play devil's advocate for a minute in order for this guy to pull off an upset in your opinion what do you feel like you got to do to beat Tim Zhu and shit have us all shocked this Saturday? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I uh -huh. think that he needs to come in there and do what he's been doing. He cannot get overwhelmed with the lights. He needs to come there and fight his fight, fight to the best of his ability. And maybe that will be enough. It probably won't be, though, because from what I saw, Tim Zhu is a more, he's a more disciplined fighter. Uh -huh. And, and um, their power is comparable to each other. But um, I haven't really seen Backroom in any trouble. I've seen Tim Zhu in trouble a couple of times. I've seen Tim Zhu dropped, and he always responds to adversity the same way. Cool, calm, and collected. So in order for Backroom to come out here and pull off the upset, like I said, he just has to stay true to who he is. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. You know, you're 22 and 0 with 16 knockouts. Don't try to go in there trying to be Shakur Stevenson or Floyd. You go in there and fight, fight, take the openings, be smart, be defensively responsible, and um, and then see what happens. Let the chips fall where they may. But it's very important that um, you don't let the lights get, you know, the big lights um, overwhelm you. Right. That was perfectly said, man. And I could see you basically took everything from me. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Um, but when, when he spoke, about Tim Zhu, he did say, like, don't underestimate his boxing ability, too. And it's not that we underestimating you, but I, I feel like you just got to take it to Tim Zhu. Just take it to him, you know. Um, don't shy away from that. And I think it's safe to say, in my opinion, I don't know what you agree with this. I think he hits harder than Fedora. And let me tell you guys this, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, keep going. That's just me, but uh, Fedora's, you know, quicker. And he do got pop. Fedora got pop. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like this guy, he's very heavy-headed, and I could be wrong because it does matter, you guys, who you hurt to. I'm not stupid, and he's never hurt nobody on the level of Fedora, but I do feel like he's more heavier-handed. And I know that may be a stretch, and obviously you guys can tell Tony disagree. he disagrees, he disagrees with me on this one. That's cool, but that's just how I feel when it comes down to that. But like I said, take it to Tyson Fury. And what's your closing thoughts, Tony? Closing thoughts is um, it's a good fight to keep boxing fans uh, to keep boxing fans excited. Uh, true boxing fans, and even some casuals, because I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like Tim Zhu has done enough to uh, win the heart of some casuals, especially with that Fundora. Uh, the Fedora performance, blood and guts. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good little treat for us. I don't think that it's going to be pay-per-view, so we'll get a chance to watch it. I do believe it's stateside. Don't quote me on that. But I do believe it's in the States, so it should be around prime time. And you guys are in a treat. 
you guys are in for a treat leading into uh, next week's fights. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, and um, so obviously, obviously, you feel like Fedora hits harder, though, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that Fedora hits harder. Okay, you know we are gonna see this fight, man, because if he drops or maybe hurt Tim Zhu, which he's talking about doing, and it's making it more interesting, it's it's making me want to see it even more. He's talking to shit, man. So we're going to see. He has a lot to prove that night. And he has a chance to prove it, you know, for us and the rest of the world. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's just I've seen, uh, I've seen, I've seen Fondora stop world caliber guys. So That's I real, yeah. The who stopped the better, the better opposition. Now, if he goes in there and, uh, if he goes in there and gets the stoppage against Tim Zoo, you know, I would have to eat my words, you know. But as of right now, you know, box is always ever changing, bro, you know. Yeah. As of right now, I got to go with the guy who has stoppage win over a former world champion. Or, no, not a former world champion, but a world-level guy. Right, I don't yeah. think that, um, I don't think Eric Lewis has been the champion. Right, but, but I get what you're saying. He's still on that level, for sure. Yeah, top yeah. three in his weight class, right, especially with his last two performances. So, right, yeah. right. And, and for and Dor Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and um, Lubin has only lost to, like, very, very good fighters. I know he lost, I think he lost to um, Rosario, though. Didn't he lose to Rosario? Who? Lubin. He didn't lose, no, he didn't lose to Rosario, I don't think. Hell no. He beat the hell out of Rosario, bro. Oh, shit. He only man. lost to Fondora and Charlo. That's it. That's his only two losses. Yeah, that's not no bad wins right there. I mean, bad Ws. I mean, I said Ws. I'm slow, you guys. But that's not no bad losses right there, though. So, it's like, he's mm -hmm. pretty good, like, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. But yeah, we killed this one, man. All right.